doing we so well. All right. So to, to recap, what are the symptoms of you finally embodying, right? Because there's a difference between 5D study and living a 5D reality. Night and day difference, right? 5D reality is non-duality. Non-duality, right? It's not the game of dueling. It's not the fight. It's not separation. It's not dark. It's not light. You're using both light and dark in 5D to create. Just like an artist would use every color, an artist would not exclude a color because you know they didn't like it because they would use it somewhere. You're going to use every essence of your soul in the fifth dimension because the third dimension is time and space and gravity. Very boring. Okay, it's separate. It's the game of right and wrong, black and white. It's the game of fear. It's the game of basically your one foot in, one foot out. You're, you know, 10 steps forward, 10 steps back. You're just kind of on a hamster wheel. And notice, even those of you who are real high up on that spiritual ladder, even us in the highest place of third dimension will still have bullets thrown at you because that's how the game sequence is. Now, if you watch the matrix, obviously we're like, no, no, thank you. And we don't necessarily get hit with those bullets, but they're still coming there. Or we can say, I think I'm done suffering. The, the name of the game in third dimension was I survive, okay? That is the opposing force of your root chakra. Your root chakra is I am alive or I survive. I thrive or I survive. Some of us have had to survive our families, survive our bodies, survive our lives, survive everything about our world. And it's been very contracting and very small. All right. So with that being said, let me see if there's enough people in here. I'm going to show you. Now, again, this ain't nothing you don't know. Again, I'm not pretending to teach you guys anything that you don't know. What my job is tonight is to bring you into a new level of awareness of where you sit act, speak in your reality, because it's really going to, it's really going to be demonstrated very quickly where you're vibrating. And it's super simple at this point to just course correct. Like there's nothing huge you guys have to do. When I say you're 99.9% .9 done, literally you're there, but there might be a frequency or two that you're wobbling on or that you're being influenced by that you could kind of snip that, that reality and Re, you know, kind of realign and still have everything you want. For a very long time, you guys, I thought, and I truly believe this, that I was going to have to leave everyone that I loved in order to go be in 5D. I really did. Because we know what that's like when we're around people who are not woke. It's like, oh my gosh, it's painful, right? And they suck you into their drama and they suck you into their stories. And because you're physical and empathic, it's like if someone's playing a, a song in your room, you can hear it. Your body is going to respond to the song that they're playing, regardless if you like it or not, because your body is influential, right? It's very much influenced. So even though people are talking and you don't agree, your body is listening. And whatever they're saying has a frequency attached to it. So as it enters the physical, right, the, the body, the body's like, what did they say? Oh, I know that story. And it starts to get triggered, even if you're beyond that. Remember, your body is still kind of in that kindergarten space of evolution. It's trying to catch up with you. It really is. It's doing everything that it can, but it's carrying weight of the past. It's carrying, you know, insecurities, doubts, fears, it toxins, right? And it's like, wait for us. It's like when you want to run up that mountain because you're fit, but, you know, you got somebody who's complaining and whining, who wants to pee every five minutes and needs a snack. That's your co-pilot, right? And you're trying to get up this mountain. And this is what it's like to try to get into that vibration and flow, okay? So let's see if I can do this right. I am going to, uh, let's see, play a video for you guys. And I know you know this. So again, I'm not teaching you anything. But first, I just want you to watch, all right? This is just a seed becoming a seedling. But as it's going on, I'm going to talk through it because I think the visual is really going to help you guys understand why you have had so many dark nights this last couple of years.
So many impact moments where you ended up having to start over again. So many losses, okay? So let's see if I can do this. All right. Okay. Da, 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 da. We have a seed. This is you, by the way. Look, you're not you're under the dirt, but you're not that far down. Okay. So as these roots start to go down, right? Notice how it's not going up first. This is your demise. This is your deascension. So every time one of these starts to go out into the dirt instead of up, this was a dark night for you. This is how you learn to anchor. Okay. Uh, let me pause. And let's look at it right here. Let's look at how far the roots had to go down in the dirt. You know, you came here as a seed, star seed, whatever. You're here in the dirt, fertilizer, lots of shitty people around you, right? You're in that darkness and you're feeding off of it. You can feel the light right above the surface. It feels like who you are. But as you start to move forward to it, you can't go high. Imagine if that little seedling went up out of that dirt without being anchored. What would happen to it? The first wind would knock it over, right? Too much sun would just burn it up. Too much rain would kill it. So what we're doing, you guys, is we're jumping into these toxic relationships and getting sued by people and, you know, and going through bankruptcies and getting really sick. And each one of those experiences is one of your roots right? It's one of your expansion moments that was like, I can't take this anymore. I, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. But you know, you need leverage. You need to have this experience of going really deep down into the dirt first to anchor yourself, to really spread out. And you'll notice that the biggest fruits that you've had to have, each one of these being a dark night, the one that is the strongest is going to be the relationship that damn near killed you, all right? The relationship, the narcissist, right? The someone who just shattered your heart. This is going to be your anchor. And isn't that interesting, okay, that, that it's the ones that really, really just shattered us that are the most important for your uprooting. See, isn't that just non-duality right there? It's like, hmm, how can I get there the fastest? What is my catalyst point? You'll notice you attract these relationships and situations right when you're at the finish line. This is like right when you feel done. This is like right when you start to feel healed. This is like right when the money starts coming in, right when you get in shape, right when you start to feel good about yourself. You're like, I'm ready to get myself out there again. So you start wheeling out of the seed. Instead of going up, you go down. Does everybody get that analogy? That was very important for, for them to show you. And I think the reason why is because, you know, I've been coaching for 12 years and I get this question every day. You know, why are these things happening to me? I've done so much work on myself. Why am I still manifesting, you know, these situations and incidents that, seems so low vibration that it's not doesn't seem like it's a match to who I am. Well, we've got to look at the third dimension. It was never our home. This is why you've never like felt connected to this place. This is not your home. Just like the dirt, right? Is not somewhere you're going to want to go back once you bloom. Okay? The dirt is where the fertilizer is. The dirt is the womb. So third dimension is technically the womb. It's designed to expand and contract, pressurize you, like basically dang near kill you so that you have something to live for. You understand that we need to play duality first to understand contrast because a spirit just coming into a body fully realized would last about two seconds here because there's no challenge. There's nothing to want, there's nothing to need, there's nothing to desire, right? So the body is very, very, very dense. And then instead of giving ourselves all of our hopes and dreams through the law of attraction, through passion and excitement, and probably lust at some point, we chase after the things that are designed to crack us open. And in that cracking open and that breaking down and that shredding, 
you start to realize who you are, right? That person who couldn't love you, right? Brought you back to yourself. That, that business partner that you brought in hoping that they were gonna bring the opportunity took your opportunity and sued you. Like, just think about it for a minute. How many times have you started over? How many times have you felt like you're failing how many times have you felt like the black sheep of the black sheep? You know, how many times have you been surrounded by people and felt alone? How many times did you feel misunderstood and not seen and not heard and not allowed to be authentic? This is actually what it was gonna take to break the shell. And once the shell was broken, right? And that's when you start feeling really expansive, like, wow, this is when you attract your rooting system, okay? So I'm glad I didn't tell you guys this before, and they didn't tell me this before because I would have been like, forget that, right? <laughs> so it's almost like we learn these things after the fact because it kind of helps us understand that what we have been doing has been perfect, right? There's been no mistakes in your life, not one person, not one place, not one thought that was not in alignment with your grand design because it was in your epigenetics for those of you who don't quite understand what that means is your your genetics are our gift to you their blueprint right they're sitting in your physicality they are a gift from your bloodline right your ancestors and also your star ancestors or your galactic energy, because you are literally 80% non-physical reality, 80% spirit, 20% human. So you got 20% DNA that is embodied of stardust that has been earthbound, which means grounded. And then you have 80% DNA of the astral space. That's a lot of DNA to work with, isn't it? That's a ton. And the genetics, would take you a thousand billion years to even unpack this much of what is accessible to you. So when we look at epigenetics, epigenetics is the blueprint, okay? But your environment, what you see, what you feel, what you perceive turns genes on and off, okay? So if you're in a toxic situation, <laughs> a Google worth of genetics that can be turned on. If you are in a loving situation, same. Now this is very difficult because of the way we're so influenced. Things are turning on and off and on and off until you step in and become the co, you know, the creator of your own reality and the co-creator with your body. When you step in and go, okay, I'm going to be the body's influence. I'm going to be my body's environment. When I say that, do you know what I mean? I am going to be my body's environment, which means that my body is only going to see, hear, and think what I show it. Very, that's a master level, right? You damn near have to get delusional, but that's perfect because that's disillusion, okay? And there's some great people who are sitting on a mountaintop, not doing laundry or paying bills, who have learned to do that very quickly. They're like a thousand years old, but again, they don't have a nine-year-old who runs around in his underwear asking for chicken nuggets at nine o'clock. Okay, I do. So I'm not there yet, but I'm working towards that. Really, it's about what influence do I want my body to witness in order to alter my genetics to create my reality? Okay, so think about the most toxic person in your life right now whether they are in your life like present or if they are, you know, estranged or if they are in the past, notice how quickly you found that thought, right? You, these could be people who you haven't seen in 20 years, but, but time and space is not real. So to your body, they're right here, <laughs> taking up space. And because of our level of, of human abuse and trauma, our auric field has become very glitchy, glitchy, okay? Now, a glitchy auric field looks like a light turning on and off, on and off. What does that track? Bugs, okay? So although your heart is pure and you wanna co-create and share your reality and really be with people, you got a glitchy auric field 
you get a ton of trauma sitting in your body and you're in an environment that is not conducive for the I am that you're trying to communicate to the universe. The number one thing that will affect your ability to get embodied, live in the playground of 5D is toxic people in your environment. That is the number one thing. It's not what you eat. It's not even really what you think. It's who's there. Here's why. Because this entanglement is, is literally kind of like Chinese handcuffs. The more you resist it, the more you're bound to it. Now let's go back to the statement that I said right before we hit record. Right? Understanding that your job is to become neutral. New to my reality. Right? We all want and are here for relationships, partnerships. This is one of the things that we came here to embody more than anything, all different types, right? Animal friendships, plant friendships, nature friendships, you know, sexual relationships, all kinds. I mean, we were so excited, but we were going to do all of those things from a fully holistic space. We weren't coming down here to fill a void or a hole. We weren't coming down here to need. We came here to share. Do you know the difference between need and share? The difference between need and share is this. I need a relationship so that I can feel good and feel connected and go play with someone and do things with them and, and you know, have my life. Or I am so abundant in who I am and I'm so awesome. I want to share this with someone. You see the difference there. One is neutral, one is lacking. In the lacking space, I need. So guess what you attract? Someone else who needs. And because law of attraction says yes to everything, the very thing that you're hiding, right? I need them to provide opportunities for me or I need them to fix this inside of me. What they actually do is break it more take it more. These are the ones who are going to steal from you, lie to you, cheat from you, take your very essence. And this is where you're a secret nine one was, but I hope they can come save me. I hope they can come help me. I hope that investment goes well. I hope this business partner, you know, does the things that I don't want to do or know how to do. So wherever you're feeling lack and then sending out a beacon to law of attraction, to create your partner or your relationship, you're going to get everything that is designed to break your spirit out of the lack that you're secretly hiding. This is the boot camp of third dimension. Third dimension is your boot camp. It is teaching you how to desire from contrast. It is teaching you how to, to discern to use empathy and compassion. It is designed for you to have a desire, but from a desire of, I can't wait to share myself. Look at that seed again. Let's go back, shall we? So you can see it. All right. Let me see here. Okay, let's just look at him right now. Okay, in order for, for that little seedling to get the momentum, to get out of the ground, what do you think his purpose is or her purpose? Because they are male and female and some of them are bisexual. I learned a lot about this today's studying, by the way. Very cool. So this particular one, let's look at it. So it's popping through the surface. What is its purpose? Why is it going? What, I mean, why is it working so hard? That's like 45 years right there in our, in our time. Why is it so working so hard? Is it going outside of the surface because it needs something? Or is it going outside of the surface to give something and share something that it is? Of course, it's going to want sunlight and it's going to want, you know, rain, but it can get that underneath the ground. It can get all the photonic energy it needs from underground. So it's not going to be fed better, nurtured better from outside. The reason why it wants to be is it wants to share what it is, all that compacted data that has been shoved inside that, set, that, that seed, right, for goodness knows how long, is desiring to share itself. So our, our journey to the light, guys, is not the journey to the light. The, our journey is to become real. 
to become the essence of what is inside of you? How many times have you sat there and been like, I just feel so much more and, and bigger on the inside than I'm, I'm able to demonstrate, that I'm able to have, that I'm able to create. My words, they're not coming out the way I want. My art is not flowing. Because the longer that we compact ourselves as a seed, right, the more we're afraid to let go. But now some seeds can live, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years if they're kept in the right conditions, which means star seeds, you don't have to bloom. You can stay under the ground and you can teach the gospel of the star seed. You can preach about the coming of the dawn. You can do energy work down there to make everyone's shell a little bit more comfortable, right? Or you can say, I think I want to live. I think I want to expand. I think I want to know thyself as what that data and that genetics is inside the seed and what it will become once it moves all the way. So just like an arrow, got to go back, right? If you're swimming in a pool, the fastest way to get to the top is to go to the bottom and leverage up. This is what a seed does when it's time to sprout. So if the last few years have felt like you were, you know, in the dryer, right, with cement shoes and getting all knocked up, then that just means your rooting system is really taking hold now. You know, this is how you can reflect on someone's life right now. If nothing's happening, right? They're just observing, maybe scared to death, holding on really tight. They got 10 different masks on. Okay. They're not going anywhere. Those of you who are attracting your biggest, scariest triggers, you're creating your roots. And the bigger those roots can become and the deeper that they can go, the more you're going to be elevated, which means that when you do pop above the surface, you're going to be strong. The first wind's not going to knock you down because you're just as big underground as you are above ground. Now, the love and light community says it's like all about the above ground, light, light, light. Well, in my work, because I've channeled ego way more than I have channeled spirit. And I will tell you that half of your intuition, okay, is in the threshold of the dirt, which means that the root is down there. The coolest thing is, is although we have been running around to live vicariously through people and heal them and give our essence away and give them our money and give them our time and give them our soul. If you look at how roots take care of each other, they do it from standing exactly where they are. A tree can pick up a frequency that another tree is not doing well. Does a tree get up? and move itself, completely uproot itself and go over to another tree and give it something that it needs? Absolutely not. From the rooting system underground, it sends healing frequencies to it, which means, example, the way that we're gonna be showing up in the new world is not by rescuing and healing. There's nothing to heal in 5D, nothing. That you've never been broken, you've never been broken. Okay, you are not broken. You are blooming. You have to shatter your seed to become something else. You have to, what it feels like, lose everything several times to create those roots. And what you're going to see is that you really don't have a desire so much to run and be everyone's best friend and be everyone's rescue. That's how we found value before this energy shifted. Now this new playground's coming over. And if, a, you know, if someone came up to you and said, I'm really sad and I don't know how to play and I'm lost, what would you do? You just go teach through example. Come over here, I'll show you. Because 5D is the playground that you're not going to spend a lot of time in. Everyone thinks 5D is utopia. Absolutely not. 5D is where you learn how to choose, okay? So 3D is density, where you learn how to survive and you learn about what separation is so that you can understand basically contrast. 
You can understand both sides of your yourself, the darkness and the light. You're like, great, got it. I'm dark, I'm light. I'm the dark, I'm the fertilizer, I'm the seed, I'm the roots, I'm the flower, I'm everything. Great, got it. Now I get to choose. So 4D is the bridge. This is what you've been walking probably your whole life. The bridge is getting you ready for higher consciousness. It's waking you up. It's, it's moving you along. It's, it's introducing people and places and things that have little messages for you. It's your teachers along the way. And if you're doing your work, I guarantee you've surpassed some of your teachers by now. Right? You're like, wow, that guy's still over there doing healing work. And I'm way past that because that's where he needs to be for the bridge. So as you move along on this bridge, you start conditioning your choices and learning how to choose and learning how to be sovereign in your own mind. And when you enter 5D, you have to lighten up. You can't take the heavy stuff with you, right? If you're not feeling good, if you feel heavy, if you feel inflamed, resistant, resentful, if you feel angry, what do you think you're going to choose? Because 5D is the game of choice, okay? It's the game of I choose. Because it's learning how now to take all of those thousands of broken pieces that 3D busted wide open and decide what you want to do with them. How do I want to decorate this? What do I want to do? Do I want to resonate more feminine or do I want to play with this masculine energy? And you can't really do that until you become sovereign, which means that you've got to lighten up. You've got to create space for all of your pain to literally become art. So we understand, if you guys have been in quantum fitness, and I know a lot of you are, is that quantum fitness is not about getting, you know, your sexy back, okay? It's really about getting knowledge of this inside world in here and reconciling your baggage, right? Because there's so many painful things that happen in third dimension. Without you knowing who you are, you can get lost in that cycle for thousands of years and not even know that you had an opportunity every time you were triggered. So what we're doing in there, right, in quantum fitness is we're learning how this mechanism works. The most sophisticated manifestation system in the universe that was designed by 12 star systems, 12 star systems basically gifted their DNA, their heritage, their stories, their spiritual gifts to your body, in the form of your chakras seven are utilized in the third dimension okay you start working with more and more and more as you move into the higher realms and by the time you get into the fifth dimension you'll be using 13. you'll be using 13 chakras okay and that 13 is a sweet spot called zero point energy where you can erase anytime you want clear your screen shake it off and because you have the blueprints of every type of DNA to choose from, you are limitless. When you feel small, you create small, okay? When you feel trapped, you create destruction. Hear me when I say that. The more trapped you feel, the more destruction you will create in your life because you aren't here to be trapped. You're, I mean, if we were gonna measure what a human is as far as a soul, it's about 10 suns. That's the energy that is impacted within you. And everything that has happened to you has basically been lining you up for you to say, out of everything that I have lived and survived and become and allowed and, and all the brutal ways that I have been on the cross and burned here, right? It's like you guys have been through all the metaphorical stories of our generations. You've been on the cross at least once or twice. You've been burned alive at least. And these are by people who love us. This story of like Judas, right? Like, really? Like you're at, you're at the dinner table right under my nose. That's going to be the people and places and things that have hurt you the most. Because that pulls on your heartstrings and really spreads out those roots the fastest. All right? Everything has been about these moments coming up. It's about who do you choose to be now? You know, no more, well, my mom didn't love me. Great, she's fertilizer. She wasn't supposed to love you the way you wanna be loved. She was there to nurture you. 
and also abuse you because that's the game of duality. In every relationship that you have in the third dimension, you are loved and abused. They're both. Unfortunately, if you are playing the 3D game, you are also doing both to people, places, and things and not trying. You are someone's Darth Vader. I don't know if you know that. You are someone's narcissist. And if we look at this an interesting thing is the third dimension collectively could be described as a narcissist. It lacks empathy, right? It's all about consumption and control and mind games and separation. It thrives on the word no. It devalues everything about you. Everything you love about you is devalued in the third dimension. You love your little quirky, you know, vibe. No. Absolutely not disgusting in the third dimension because in the third dimension is designed for you to separate even from yourself because until you separate from yourself, you don't know yourself. Here's how you can use that analogy, right? Can you see your face right now? Well, you can because you're on Zoom, but if the Zoom call wasn't here, you would need a mirror. You would need a mirror. If you never had a mirror your whole life, you would have no idea what your face looked like at all. And as a spirit says, I want to know who I am so that I can choose who I am. I've got to see who I am. And then we see it. We're like, oh, gosh, no, not that. <laughs> and because their dimension is governed by the law of duality, it's the law of separation, but it's also resistance, which means that what you resist has a greater force than what you desire. So the more you say no to something, the more it comes to you, okay? And the more you say yes to something, right? If you are saying no to yourself, doesn't show up, does it? So this is the game that teaches you how to study your own reflection, see yourself in other people, and never take any of it seriously, ever. This is where you study consciousness, not get consumed by it. You're going to want to study here so that you can learn how to work your energy in a physical vessel. When you are non-energy, when you are non-physical, like someone asked me the other day, and this is a great question because a lot of people don't want to go to, to, to five and 60 because they think that they're going to lose their connection with desire, right? Well, am I going to feel passion? Am I going to feel like crazy love over there? Is it just going to be like neutral? That seems really boring. If it's just all peaceful, what's exciting, right? And I actually, I think that's a great question because again, we have thrived on drama. I mean, it's built your nervous system. It's busted your nervous system. Your brain is a, an addict for pain and pleasure. It's absolutely addicted to drama, your brain. So for us to say, oh, 5D is where we just play. Everything's fun and nice. Your brain's like, I don't like that. I don't like peace. I like passion. I want fire. That's why the relationship that had the best sex probably almost killed you was the hardest to walk away from, right? And then the one that was actually good for you, yeah, right? And so your brain's like, we don't want that over there. We want fire and passion and brimstone. And, and, that, and what you have to understand is that have you guys, and if you have never experienced this, you should, because it's fun, but actually like get to the point where you are like high on something where it's such a bliss, but it's consistent, right? And it's funny because it's like, I never, I never took drugs or anything like that. I am a drug by the way, but I didn't take drugs. It was like not okay in our family because that was the cult we rocked, but we didn't have any drugs. And so I didn't even have my first Tylenol until I was 24 and I felt guilty. So no, no drugs were in my body the whole time. But when I was getting some dental work done a couple of years ago, they said, hey, do you want the gas? And I was like, at first, you know, that, that imprint, oh, no, no, no. I was like, yeah, I want to see what this is like. <laughs> Bring it on. So I'm sitting there with this gas mask, right? I'm conscious and I'm in this state of space, but I'm so blissed out. I asked myself this question. I said, could I do this forever? I said, hell yeah. Because I felt passionate. I felt excited. I felt calm. I felt peace. 
I felt chill. I was listening to what they were saying. I was having thoughts about what was going on. I was interacting in my own space. I was vibing. And I thought, that's what it feels like to not have a body. So we're not losing anything, you guys. I mean, think about oxytocin. Think about serotonin, dopamine, all in the same experience. Like being super calm and confident and secure and safe while you're just blissed out of your mind. So egos, you're going to have a blast and your ego is going, but I can't go. That's not true. Your ego gets to come. Your ego is here to integrate in with you and rise with you. This is not the game of separation anymore. It's inclusion. Once we move into not once we move into non-duality, everyone is welcome. Everyone wins. Everybody's allowed. Dark demon, come on, let's have chips. It's all good because you're going to need something or not need, but you'll want something and share something with each of those essences. The ones you are pushing away, disgusted by, are buried trauma that needs to be resurrected because each one of you contains the darkest part of an angel and the lightest part of source energy. Together, you are the child. You're the hybrid between, let's say, Lucifer and God, right? They had a little rendezvous and made you. You are exactly half. You're a half breed, okay? You are a hybrid of the deepest, deepest parts of pain and suffering and the lightest, lightest part of bliss. So in the house of the body, the genetic structure of the child can have it all. Have it all. Some of you have resonated more in the dark because that's where you were raised. You feel like closer to that. I understand that. And the reason why is because the darkness, although lonely and separate, it was allowing. It allowed you to be in your darkness. It allowed you to have that dark spaces within you. Then when you get over in the light, it's like judgment, 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 judgment. Like you can't even smile right over there. And how is that love? So there is no such thing as love in the third dimension. Love does not exist in the third dimension. You are not third dimension. Okay. You are technically all 12 dimensions in one body, which means that you can have the essence of the first dimension and you can have the essence of the 12th dimension, but love is not available as something to have in the third dimension. Love is pain. It's attachment. It's suffering. It hurts. It's binding. It's, I have to be selfless. Love is not, I give something away to help. Love is, I get to share who I am with you. And you get to share who you are with me. And through what you are inspires me to become more. You know, we're like, don't copy me. Do you know that that's actually what you're always doing to find your higher self in this life? The people who have inspired you the most are a fractal of your exact higher self. The people who inspire you the most on this planet are you. That is your higher self channeling through that being. Your lowest self is the things you are most disgusted and resentful of. So when you get over there to the gates, right, you get asked questions like, okay, right? And I gave you guys the blog. I gave you the frequency chart. And the rules of non-duality are you cannot walk in if you're carrying baggage that weighs you down, okay? You can be the darkest of dark in your memories, but you have to have it repurposed, which means if you have a ton of grief in your body, you better have made it into something else because you can't take grief. You can't take lack into heaven. It's only abundance. So if I turn my grief into something else, right? So all of my quantum fitness program was written out of grief. Every ounce of my pain was channeled into that program. Because the places I wasn't looking for grief was where it was interrupting my manifestations. Where I couldn't close the deal, per se, out in physical reality, is where my blind spots were on the inside. 
And our relationships are always designed to get you to see where you are hiding from yourself, where you're embarrassed of your dark energy. It's like, oh yeah, my dad's Lucifer. I don't want anybody to know that. And my mom's, you know, an angel, right? They're both embarrassing. <laughs> and it's just like, what are you because of that? Right? There are some really amazing things there. But you're not going to be able to get in unless you're bored. Bored is the frequency that you will arrive in where you are now ready for the next level of your expansion. Bored. I'm bored. That means I'm neutral. If you've ever had a narcissist in your life, the only way to get them out is to be neutral, to not interact, to not like fight against, to not flow energy to. Because in the third dimension, pain expands when you look at it. Problems expand when you look at them. You want money? You can't have money over there until you are money. You have to be money. So how do you be money over in the third dimension? Well, go ask a billionaire. It's not a pretty sight. I have to be confident. I have to know I deserve it. I have to be able to take anything that I want, right? I have to feel safe in knowing that I deserve these things. Those are the money frequencies in the third, D, third, third dimension. And some of you are like, I don't think I want my riches over there. I think I'll wait. So if you feel like you're at the gates, but you're like, you're lightening your, you know, your shadows and bags, but your money bags aren't very full. Don't worry. Don't worry. You don't need it there. If you're like, man, I feel like I'm there, but I'm just, you know, I don't have the, I don't have the financial work or I don't have the, trust me, you don't need it there because you are the abundance. When you walk through the door, you have everything you need inside of you to create this experience and this experience and this experience and this experience. And you don't need a bank. You don't need a middleman. You don't need a healer. You don't need a practitioner. And you don't need a mirror because you know exactly who you are. So where are you in reference of this? Are we still fighting against the rooting system? Are we still looking at our roots as failures? Your Reflection of yourself is the one that law of attraction listens to, okay? If you wanna know what's going on in your subconscious mind, right? Think about yourself right now, your own body image. Just take a moment, my body image, right? You're like, I'm cool, like I'm good, right? Okay, now look at your body through someone else's eyes. Look at yourself through 15 different people's eyes. What do they see about you? What do they feel about you? What do they notice about you? What, what are they going to point out about you that you really don't want anybody to know or that you've kind of made peace with, but you're not in your best. You're not, you're, you don't have your A game. Okay? When you get to these gates, guys, you're not going to have your A game. You're not going to have your bags packed full of money, right? You might still have cellulite. It's cool, right? It'll transform into something else over there. The only job that you have to do is be good with this, which means you're not going to be angry against your world. You're going to be like, that's a video game and obsolete. Hello. You're not going to be like angry at your, you know, fellow man. You're not going to be stuck in the past. Okay. You won't be tied to the job as much as you were. You won't be holding on to the money. You're going to just feel like almost like what's happening to me. I just feel like I don't care anymore. I feel like I'm showing up every day, but like, I don't really care. And that means that you're getting at the end of the bridge because what's happening is you are becoming the abundance and the freedom that you've been chasing. All right. So I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to just open this up for questions. I have your blog here. Now I'm going to pull it up to make sure I don't miss any of the juicy nuggets that I was supposed to talk about. Um, you guys all should have the frequency chart. My good friend Frank put it in here for you. And this is really, this is not a matter of fact. This is my understanding of frequency. I know tons of other teachers have their frequency charts. You guys, they're all good. Mine's not any better. It's just my focal point. It's just a marker point to see where am I vibrating. That's it. Okay, so if we look at the frequency chart, you guys have it in your, um, in your chat there. If we look at 
broken down in the me, myself, and I of, of frequency and vibration. And for those of you who are like, what are you talking about? It's just where you are emotionally with your own reality, like how you're vibing, okay? Now, grief is the lowest point in, in my understanding because grief is the death experience that lingers. When you're grieving something, your homeless love, your love has nowhere to go, right? You're just floating like a ghost. And you have lots of griefs in the past right? That are haunting you every time you try to get happy. You try to get happy. There's the ghost. Like, remember me? Remember me? Remember all the money you lost? Remember all the time you lost? Remember all the, the, you know, the essence you lost trying to help that loser over there? I'm here still. Okay. And I'm going to tell you guys, there's going to be two things that are going to catch and snag you. Like, you know, if you've ever run down the hall and your jacket gets caught by a door, <laughs> flat lines you, it's going to be two things time and people. Those are going to be the two things that are going to hold you back. And you're going, I don't want time, but there is time wounds sitting in your body. I'm running out of time that has a major ghost, like a monkey on your back. And time was something you were going to use to discern and decide and then get to experience your choice with. But here it's become a warden. It's become a slave driver. It's become the essence of destruction of our own inner self time. Okay. Time is right now the empath, the sensitive, the embodiment's greatest wound. It's located right here and it's held here and it's governed by divine masculine. Right. It's like, I'm going to let you know when you're going to wait on me. Think about something you're waiting on right now that is like make or break. Think about something that you're waiting on that you really need. Notice how much suffering is in that. Like it, get away from your spirit of bypassing or oh, everything happens for a reason. Get into how your ego feels about waiting and it's torture, right? Especially if you're hungry, if you're broke, if you're sick, think about what one day feels like if you're hungry. Think about what one week would look like if you had cancer. Think about one, what one month would be like if you lost the, your favorite person in life. Think about what one month would feel like. So our greatest grief moving into the fifth dimension is time where we picked up this wound was age five when we were supposed to embody self-love. But instead we said, I will wait to love myself until someone tells me when I can, when I'm allowed. My freedom was taken, right? My choices were taken and it's all governed by when do I get to go play again? Is it time for me to play again? Is it time for recess? When do I get to go see you again? Time. Time, time, time. Time is a lot deeper impacted in your bone. Okay. So I tell this story a lot because it's very, it's a reference point. So in my 40s, I was like, I'm getting these teeth straight. So I got myself braces. And the doctor was like, this is going to be rough <laughs> because you have old bones. Thank you very much. And old bones are stubborn and they take a lot of time to move. Time. Okay. I was like, I don't want to believe that. Right. I'm an alchemist. And it was a lot faster than he thought, but it still took a lot of time and there was a lot of pain involved. And it was because the impacted trauma of you losing your freedom. You losing your freedom. And freedom is the house of money and time abundance and time. So you are sitting here, the seed of creation, the seed of God, the mustard seed itself, and you're waiting that for that other seed to tell you you can have it. Or those seeds over there dressed like the government to tell you that you're allowed to do something. So this is a huge wound within the human being that if we do not let go of this particular one, we can't go over and be timeless. Time wounds age you very quickly. They steal your joy from the moments where you are in joy. Guys, have you noticed 
If you are running some trauma over here and you're happy right here, you're not fulfilled. Something is stealing your joy, isn't it? It's like the ghost. You know, something bad's going to happen if you get too much joy, right? You know, you're going to run out of time. You know, you should be doing something else. You know, you shouldn't be playing this long. You know, you should be doing what you're supposed to be doing right there. Okay. The other one is your heartstrings. Who do you think you're going to leave behind? Who are you afraid? You look over to your husband and you're like, oh God, you're pretty, but you're dumb as a rock. You're not coming to 5D, right? And you're like, I'm sad, but, and seriously, I mean, I've had that thought. I've not my husband because I'm not, but I have looked at my loved ones and been like, dear God, you ain't coming, honey. You know, but let me tell you something. The part of me that had that thought was unconscious. Because I'll tell you, there's a lot of unawakened people that are already over there because they didn't have to go through the spiritual journey of healing. They just lived. You know, this was never a requirement to be spiritual. It was never a requirement to heal. It was like, get busy living or get busy healing or get busy studying or get busy learning. You were never here to learn. The whole entire universe is inside your shell. What could you learn? Who could teach you more than what's in the genetic imprint of 12 different star systems? I don't have a different body than you. We have the same exact, you know, biocomputer. Why would I ever need to learn? Okay. What we're doing is we're unlearning. We're like realizing, I don't need you to tell me I'm allowed. I'm allowed. And we need to have our tantrum ears. We need to have our angry ears. We need to have our rage and our cry fest. And we need to explode. And we need to shop to soothe the inner child. And then we need to go eat for a while. And then we need to go explore for a while. And then, you know, we try on 20 different relationships and 20 different religions. And then we come back and go, okay, now I'm going to live. So are you living or are you working to live? Okay, how much of your life is living and how much of it is geared around trying to live over there? Like, am I trying to live or am I living? Okay, so it's like this. The science of 5D is I, I am being to have. Over there is I'm doing to be, right? I'm doing to be rich. I'm doing to be loved. I'm doing to be great. I'm doing to be seen. I'm doing to be heard. Over there, it's I be to have. That's it. This chasing to be is from trauma in your human body. I don't think that you have spiritual trauma. Okay, you've, you've reconciled that with every retrograde and every you know, every part of the human ascension process has pretty much cleared your spirit. What's left is the sediment. It's in the body. The rest of your journey is in the body, which means that you need to start being human, which means allow yourself to be human. The more you accept yourself as imperfect, the more perfect you become. The more you look at yourself as someone who needs healing, you will always play that story in 3D. I need to be healed. 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 I need to be loved. I need to be loved, right? And so in there, although very easy to create three dimensions and create non-duality from it, the intoxication of survival and pain over there becomes like a narcotic. You can be in your bliss of your house, like just chilling, feeling like Jesus himself, right? All of a sudden you go somewhere else and you're like, ooh, it's scary out there. I'm going to lock my door. And now you're like, should I get the vaccine? <laughs> and that's like two seconds flat. You've been influenced by your environment. Your epigenetics are like, who are we? Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? And you're going to decide and discern who that is based on what you see in the mirror, but so much more what you think other people see. You're not good until you're not living that double reflection. It means if Dermot looks at me, I don't feel different about myself than when I look at me, okay? If Amy looks at me, I don't feel different 
than when I look at me. But forever, my entire life, I look at me and be like, mm. and then through Amy, I'd be like, oh, right? So again, what do you see when you look through different sets of eyes? This is how you know the health and the condition of your subconscious. If you're still worried about what people think of you, oh, good Lord, if they only really knew what was in there. <laughs> okay, so it's like, if you really knew what was inside of you, you wouldn't be worried about what's being judged outside of you. You also wouldn't be judging. All right. And I think the reason that, that the energy of, of what's going on is I'm like, I'm a week into a second Kundalini experience that's literally ripping my body to shreds right now, but it's cool. You know, I'm vibing and I'm working with Gabriel and we're bringing in this second coming energy. The second coming energy is the Christed energy becoming embodied, right? So Jesus said, I will rise again, right? But not by myself. So I'm gonna fractal myself in a billion pieces called star seeds. And we're gonna talk about mustard seeds and we're gonna lay all these reference points, the burning bush over there, fall, right? We've got Adam and Eve, Atom, Eve, right? E means elemental viral element atom right all creation eve okay the apple right in one essence represents duality here's why an apple an apple a day keeps the doctor away well the seeds have cyanide they can kill you that's the game of duality when atom and eve divine masculine divine feminine a dapple they created duality and the snake your kundalini energy was basically like, bring it on, let's do this. And here we go, this story, quantum story of the grand separation, not between black and white, not become between races, but the real war has been between gender. And ones who have come to save us the fastest are the ones who refuse to choose which gender they are. And both, I'm, I'm both, I'm cool. And we're like, no, pick one so I can side with you or I can sleep with you. Pick one now. And they're like, yeah, I'm cool, right? And what we're having is we're having algorithm glitches in the matrix of all these beings going, I'm not going to be who you want me to be. And I'm going to stand in my truth to remind you that it's okay for you because there are seeds that are feminine and cannot grow if they do not act as the feminine. There is masculine seeds that cannot grow unless they act as that. And then there's bisexual seeds that can do whatever they want, whenever they want, okay? So did you come here to be a man? Did you come here to be a woman? Did you come here to be undecided? Good, start being it. I did not come here to be a strong man, okay? This is like a, a blog I just wrote. You guys will hear it tomorrow. I'm getting really like... Um, zero fucks given at this point right now because I just don't care anymore for years like I have this very ball buster attitude with work and men in the industry you know I'm in a mostly male industry a bunch of you know scary looking old chubby neuroscientists who read textbooks and try to tell me about quantum physics right and they leave and they go they call me big dick energy and I'm five foot nothing and what that means is that I have the biggest stick in the room. I don't wanna be a man, okay? I did not come here to be a man. I came here to be a delicate flower and wear dresses and be a princess, but I was not allowed to do that, or at least I thought, so I had to become male. And therefore I have suffered greatly in my own rise because I had to be so strong that I had to take on the presence of a male. And this alpha female ladies, come on, it's great. Yes, I'm proud of myself. I can do everything a man can do, right? Yes, but do you want to? Do you want to be that strong? Did you really come here to like do it all and be so terrified that the, the boat's going to rock that you really can't have anybody around you? Are you so terrified? And I know because this was me. It was like, I don't want to be. Like I secretly am like, I just want someone to like tell me what to do once in a while, right? And just be there and not have an agenda or like a double standard there. 
And because I had to become a strong man to survive, I attracted weak men in my life. And what I did is, this is interesting, it's just in the blog, but when I went through my last breakup, I was like, okay, I'm the problem. I acknowledge that. What am I doing? So I called up each one of the men that I had long-term relationships with, and I said, what was it like to date me? And they're like, you don't want to know. And I was like, no, really, because the way that I see myself is I'm like, very kind and giving and funny and charming and, you know, do all this work, quantum stuff. So I'm kind of quirky and weird and fun, too generous. I'm too generous, too loving. Like I'll smother you to death. Like, love me. I want to love you. You know what they told me? Every single one of them, you emasculate me. You emasculated me. And I'm like, how? You did everything that I wanted to do better. You never let me help you. You never let me get a word in. Right. You, and then every time I attempted, it was wrong or it wasn't fast enough. It wasn't good enough. And I never, ever once saw that about myself because I saw myself as this loving, kind woman who was trying to heal your unconscious ass so you could be a man. And I never realized from an emasculated male's perspective that emasculated means I'm not allowed to be a man. Now, what is that, anyways? Okay, well, in the development of their body, right, is I seed, I own, I protect, I provide, I fix, I develop. That is innate in every single cell in their body. And when they are not allowed to do that, they become emasculated, which means they become lost and separate from themselves. And they have two choices that they can either become the victim or the perpetrator. Planet Earth is run by males that are victim and perpetrator. So the woman had to rise. So the star seed came in predominantly feminine. We know this because in quantum fitness part one, we had everybody take what side of your brain are you more? Like, are you more feminine or masculine? Even Dermot was like, feminine, right? <laughs> because that's what has needed to happen to create balance on the planet. Overdrawing masculine needs feminine. But here's what happens is the male influence was so dominant that just like inside of your body, if you have too much estrogen, your testosterone is trying to rise to catch up to you. And then you're like, why do I have a hair on my chin? That's why you have too much estrogen. Your testosterone is trying to come up and match it because the only way you will ever be blissed out of your mind is if you're balanced, okay? Joy does not happen like this or like this. So the masculine was going, help, we're too, we're, we're too broken, right? We're perpetrators and we're victims, help. So divine feminine comes in, begins to rise, but because she lives in imagination, she can pretend she's a man. So she rose too fast. She, she got too big. And now the, the future is feminine. Well, yeah, that's great for emasculated men, right? And so now what's happening is, is we rise and then we fall, but we do not fall. We balance. We balance each other out. So as I'm working with Gabriel right now, okay, what he's telling me is that your ticket to 5D, and some of you are going to hate this, is relationships. Let's look at that word. This is how he broke it down. I was like, mind blown. Okay, relay, right? Relay, okay? We're back and forth, in breath, out breath, relay, together, equal exchange, relay, shun, definition of action. Taking action in the relay will equal your ship. The ship that you will use is your relationships. Are they balanced? Are they neutral? Are they loving? Are they kind? But are they attachment free? Okay, I'm not going to get into that right now because there's so much work we can do. So you're like, okay, how do I do this? Very, very, very simply. Everything you're worried about, every ounce of pain in your body, every unfulfilled desire you have currently is coming from nothing more than an imbalance of your human body has nothing to do with your family, has nothing to do with in your bank account, has nothing to do with anything except this balance. 
your masculine, your feminine energy, your heart, your gut, okay? Your three brains, me, myself, and I, when they go through their own little ascension process, your kundalini energy will move up into your pineal gland, completely activate all the potential. So it's almost like the inner child is the heart going, I want to share, I want to share. And the pineal gland is the black credit card with infinite abundance. Like, whatever you want. When your pineal gland turns on, it also activates your human, superhuman DNA, the rest of your gifts. None of this can come from a practitioner, okay? And I'm a practitioner. But I'm telling you that where you need to get it is from inside, is putting yourself back together the way you want it to be, which means less vicariously living out there and more going, how do I feel? And how do I feel? So when I created Quantum Fitness, it was not like, hey, let's get in great shape. That is a byproduct because when your hormones are balanced, you guys, and, you, and adrenaline moves through your body, you know, like when you're stressed out and you're like, adrenaline comes in. If you are balanced with your testosterone, guys, that turns into freaking muscle. I'm, I'm not kidding. I never like work out barely at all. And I have a six pack and I don't try, but I use my stress hormones differently. Okay. Like when I'm put into an adrenal situation, I use adrenaline instead of think it. I don't let it squish me in to worry about problems and then go into a place of a, 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 like overthinking critical mass. And all of a sudden I'm down in the, you know, it's like I've overthought everything. What you're doing is you're using stress hormones to destroy your physical body. Or you can use them to birth those genetics inside. 600% extreme, you know, strength with one little trigger. The last trigger you had was potential for you to become superhuman. What'd you do with your last trigger? Because once those stress hormones turn on, you're active, but what are you using? Are you using it to defend yourself in your reality or go, ooh, my superhuman abilities? Ladies, if you've been pregnant, you know what these superhuman, feel, these things are. We grow life, right? It's like, there's nothing like that experience, but at the same time, we're not using it the way we could, okay? So it, hopefully this is making sense because really what we need to do is so freaking simple. Like you're gonna notice the further you get on this bridge, the easier it is. There's no, there's no learning, there's no study, there's no healing, there's no spirit, spirituality, there's no religion. It's just, who do you choose to be in love? How do you wanna share it? How do you wanna receive it? Great demonstrate over there. Okay, great. Well, I want to go over Paris. So I want to look different, feel different. Great. Go do that. Well, I'm going to go over here. Great. Go do that. Because you're a billion different pieces, you get to play different parts all day long. And you don't have to choose. Like, I don't know what happened. You changed. Well, yeah, you're supposed to. All right. The coolest thing about all of this is that when you become the butterfly, okay, you can go where the caterpillars are. Heck yeah, you can swoop down, play with them, eat with them, you know, give them, you know, whatever they need because they can't provide for them. And then you're like, bye. And then you go play with your friends. You lose nothing. You're not going to a different planet where you're not going to see your family anymore. This is what people think. And if teachers that are teaching that, shame on you because this is a multi dimensional collective hologram. You make it up as you go. There's never, you would never create your own reality where you had to lose someone you loved. But you also shouldn't create a reality where you get stuck somewhere because of someone you love. So I created a blog for you guys. It's a check-in. Look at the questions, sit with the questions. If they trigger you, you're welcome because this is the way you're gonna get over there, right? And when I get up, when I say go over there, I mean, get in here, okay? The quantum fitness program was designed to get you here and here and here so that you can create everything you want there. The more separate you are from here, the less manifestation skills you have. Okay. The more you have pain in your body, the more separate you are from knowing what your body needs and wants. The more conflict you have in relationships is a definition of what you're conflicted within here. 
So really the last final frontier is the submarine. And we know everybody else's problems, but we need someone to help, help us with ours. And so what we wanna do is we wanna, if we're going to remember anything, it's how this freaking thing works, okay? Because you were intact as a child, but you were taught to separate, taught to separate, taught to separate. Don't think, don't feel, don't act. And so you just used other people as your manifestation. Like, okay, I need money, there's my job. I need love, there you go. Like me, I was like, I need some love. Okay, four kids later, I'm like, hmm, I can't keep making these things. And after two or three years, they don't love me like they used to. What am I gonna do now? And I'll tell you, when I realized that I couldn't keep pumping out kids, because that's nothing like that unconditional love, I realized I was gonna have to figure this out on my own. It was tough because we can literally create things in our reality as the symbol of love, but notice how they always wanna leave. They always wanna get away from us. No, love me, love me, right? And what they're telling you is, no, I just showed you what you are. Be the love that you have for me. Okay, and this is why we have kids because we can see ourselves in them, right? Or, or our animals or our nature because women, you guys, we are the nature, okay? We are the nurture, okay? Men, it's like if this was a video game and we were gonna break down the elements, ladies, we would be the game, okay? Guys, You'd be the archetype walking in the game and together we could experience each other. Your time, your freedom, we're abundance, we're space, together we co-create. Now, I'd love to, to play with Dermot, but I don't wanna play with Dermot if I still am separated from my masculine and he's separate from his feminine because you know what's gonna happen? We're gonna break up and it's gonna be his fault <laughs> because I'm separate from my masculine. So I'm gonna need him to play surrogate for what I haven't reinstalled. When you reinstall this, okay, then I can play with him, but I also get to let him be totally himself. I don't need him to change. I don't need to manipulate him, ladies. I don't need to withhold sex. I don't need to do any of those mind games because he's being him and I'm being me and we're just co-creating. We're not consuming each other. We're complementing each other. That's the definition between a relationship and a partnership. So when you look at this blog, I know this is like serious stuff, but don't be serious. Like the less serious you are and the more, you know, you can change your mind about who you are every day. I mean, you guys have been seeing me do stupid, crazy stuff on like Snapchat because the idea is to not let my biology set in right now. Like, I don't want to be Jessica. I want to be an apple or a taco because in that way, I'm like, how would a taco talk? How would, how would a blueberry talk? And I know it seems ridiculous, but what I'm teaching is my neural pathways to not solidify right now. When my neural pathways solidify, I determine a personality. My personality creates my personal reality. And I'm in this malleable state right now where I'm not trying to anchor into no, but nothing. Like, nope, 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 I'm malleable. I wanna stay water right now. I don't wanna find that ice place where I harden in and get stuck. So I'm playing this malleability game now that I have created this, this love affair going on with my masculine and feminine. And I'm realizing that money and time and health do not come from you eating well and working out. It's all bullshit because you're a hologram. <laughs> when your perception of your reality is intact, you have epigenetics to take care of that, which means that you have probably Viking warrior in there who has you know, a six pack abs. Why don't you channel that? right? Why are we worrying about grandmother who had diabetes and a fupa? No, let's go to the, let's go over here where the Viking bodies are and you can tap into these frequencies. So we're just now starting part three of quantum fitness. And this is where like I get to play because we're going to be starting alchemy, which means we're going to be going to look for those genetics, right? You can't be in resistance of this and then go pull from your genetic line where, I mean, the Greek gods came from. You know, mythology is true and it's in your bloodline. You know, it's true. Every superhero book that was ever written or story was channeled, which means it's in your bloodline. What superhero do you resonate with the most? Okay. Like you are going to think of the, the way you're built, you know, the way that you think, right? It's like, hmm, what would that look like? 
that's where you should be pulling towards not oh how do i prevent cancer how boring like what are we doing here we're destroying our reality because we're creators and if we're not creating we're destroying because the other side of love is grief so if you're not building your empire and your legacy then you are slowly destroying your physical vessel and every relationship in it and eventually you'll burn the bridges by just being yourself and then you'll start again but by now we have major root systems okay so if you guys have not done this program with me and you're not being personally mentored by me i highly recommend it because yes you can take a look at this list that i gave you and check 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 if you could check all of them you're great great please start teaching people how to do it yourself but if you're not join us because this is the way out is the way through, right? It's like what turns it on, turns it off. And what you are seeking is seeking you. What you desire is already inside of you. Your abundance is not going to be falling from a bucket of money. It's going to be birthed from the inside out, okay? The one you want to love you, the way you want to love you, cannot see and hear you until you reconcile this relationship. And the only way you can reconcile that is to get all those hungry ghosts off your back. Okay. So when you start to think about a pure positive vision, if you can't go more than like 39 seconds without the peanut gallery of the ghosts from the past, well, that's not going to work. And you don't have enough money to do that. And mm, then those are ghosts speaking to you. You think it's your ego? It's ghosts. What are ghosts? Homeless love. And you pushed them away and then you ran in the search for love. You pushed them away, you ran in the search for love, but it's one big loop. And it's like you go on a date with someone and it's a ghost. Remember me? I'm going to ghost you. I'm going to abandon you. I'm going to reject you. Oh, but wait, first we're going to have a kid together so that I can really hurt you, right? And then we start that story or you get into a business agreement with someone and then you're, uh, you find yourself in a lawsuit next year and that's your rooting system. So the only thing you have to do is get to know you, get to know you, know. And that word is not, is not decide like if I like myself or not, just know, know thyself. Who are you really? What are you not allowed to do? Who's poisonous in your life? Who's telling you what you can and cannot be? Who do you have to ask for for money? These are very important questions because if they're, if your life is governed by outside influences, you have to stay a seed, right? And what happens is that that energy inside of you is just going to be like, screw it. And then you just, you don't have to do it that way, but it does happen. You're here to play. Remember I said, you're, you're Lucifer's child and you're this, you know, God's child, and you are literally two angels, dark and light in one body, and you did not come here to choose sides. Okay. You did not come here to choose sides. You came to be both. What does Lucifer need? Really? Love. That's it. But consistent. Consistent no matter the behavior. Consistent no matter what he's doing. Consistent no matter what he's saying. Consistent no matter what he's taking from you. Consistent love. I see you. I hear you. I love you. It can only scare you if you feel separate from it. But if you realize that you are half darkness and half light, and that's how you know how to heal people is because of the dark. You illuminate it with the light, but you are not healing people with your, with your light. You are healing people because you understand the dark and you can hold space for that. Okay. But our time for healing is over, guys. It's time to play. You will play your way into the higher realms. I mean, the angels go, what are they still doing? They're healing? What, what are they healing? <laughs> They're healing because they keep hurting themselves. Okay, what's the definition of insanity? I'm like, I know, but I was doing it too. So again, it gives you something to do when you're trapped. When you're trapped, healing gives you something. To, it gives you a purpose right? When you're broke, working gives you a purpose, right? When you're, when you feel alone, 
you know, searching for love gives you a purpose, but it never is fulfilling because you never needed any of it. You just needed to stand in your being and say, I am, and your magnetic energy brings those who vibrate in alignment with it to you instead of you chasing them while you're out running your ghosts. Okay, so the game of 3D will remain just like any obsolete, boring game that's existing. If you, st if you feel like, well, I can't afford the new upgrade, let's work on your money line. Your money line, guys, is located in your third chakra, okay? It is right here. It's the bridge between your heart and what you see, right here, okay? So work on your money line, easy breezy, okay? Work on your level of understanding and creating your reality. That's between your root and your sacral. We'll work on that, okay? How you're demonstrating your life, your solar plexus, once you allow yourself to be, I am, I am, I am, your solar plexus will unite with your heart. Your heart's telepathic. You no longer have to work for a living, okay? As soon as your heart comes back online, no more worky, okay? There might be some action steps, but it's more about organization and cho choosing. And you'll watch everything that you want come to you, right? And anything left to discern, decide, or heal will take care of from playing. Think about it. In the first game, pain is your teacher. That's how you learn the most. What would it look like if love was your teacher? What if that PTSD was loved right out of you because someone was consistent? Okay. What if that fear? of men, right, was loved out of you by a man who was really a man and vice versa. You realize is that when you get someone who is sovereign, they are the walking example that can hold space, be consistent, and their very presence will heal you and you will heal them. If you're a practitioner out there, I know, how healed are you compared to what you give? You're probably sleeping at night. How do I heal them? It's a really sticky one. And it's, hello, what about us? Okay, we've gotten our value because you know what? Part of it, didn't, we didn't want to be alone. Well, I don't want to go 5B and be alone. You guys are alone now. You got nobody that understands you really. We're all spread out all over the world. It's like a cruel trick. Have you noticed that the ones that you're the most connected with don't like 2,000 miles away because your seed needed to be anchored in to hold that space? So you realize that when we start blooming, we don't have to be separate. But right now we do because we have to take up that space and spread our vibration out. And COVID has, has been really great for us because we really had to anchor in and be the seed in the dirt that we were in. You see, like before we could keep running over here and hiding over there and running over there and being over there. I mean, I did that for two years. I just traveled all over the planet and didn't even realize I had any shadow. You can totally jump around for years. So that's what COVID was, was our higher self going, everybody's grounded. Everybody go to your room and think about it. And you're like, I don't want to. We try to escape. We try to run away. We, you know, wish our parents death. And then all of a sudden we're like, fine. And then we're looking at our yearbook and we're crying about our lost friends, you know, and we're wearing our old baseball hat and we're reminiscing and we're purging grief, you know, and then we're like, this room is disgusting. And we start decluttering and we start to go, you know what? I'm really grateful for this room. I didn't even know I had a bed. Wow. Okay. Now you're like, I'm good. I'm chill. And then mom and dad goes dinner time. And you're like, yeah, I'll be there in a minute. This is the process of COVID. <laughs> so we're going to be in our room until we become soft. So if you guys are in a place on the planet right now where your government is, is being shitty, think about what you can do in that room because you're creating a reality no matter what state or country you're in. And I would like to get to you. So could you please do your work? <laughs> we found Mexico. Of all places, we're, go we're running through the border. And that is one place that all of us can meet. So if you haven't done quantum fitness, part one, jump in there, okay? We're about to start part three, which is alchemy. We're gonna be starting building the superhuman body. That's where we are. So we've done part one, part two, part three. I know some of you guys don't feel like you're ready for part three. You are. 
Okay, the fact that you don't think you are means you are. Okay, once we start building and working in that genetic structure in the pharmacy of the brain, you don't need supplements, you don't need anything because you already have it. You just need to learn how to embody it. So we'll only use this and this and this as a memory of what's in the brain. We'll activate it, we'll start turning DNA on, and then we'll actually have a body that feels really light and playful. But first, you got to get rid of the baggage, got to declutter, you got to clean out this space. And that's really all we're doing in part one. Part two, we're learning how our bodies and brains manifest. Part three is, okay, let's get to work. Who do you choose to be and how do you want to live? And stop worrying about money and time and all that. It will all be taken care of you, all right? When this turns on, everything gets taken care of for you. Your job is to surrender and let it go. What part of you can't is just a ghost. So we got to do, you know, we, we got we to gotta take care of some, we got to go ghost hunting clear them out, right? And then basically turn them into love, turn them into purpose because we're not abandoning anybody. Ego gets to come because ego's watching you do this. Do you know what ego's, been, I know we're running over, but you know what ego's been watching you guys do for the last 20 years? Study spirituality. There he goes like, I'm good. I'm just going to wait right here. Just as beat up and broken as ever because I hide in the body one place she's not looking she's looking in everybody else's body because she's clairvoyant she's studying she's going into all kinds of lucid states i can't go there so i'll just wait i'll just wait i'll wait for her vibration to drop someone triggers her or trolls her on facebook and i'll be waiting <laughs> so now what we're doing is we're going okay i'm good i've hit my glass ceiling if you've hit your glass ceiling you guys are ready for 5d you're like, this is, this is all I can do here. I like, and that does not mean success and money. See, your spirit rules are not human rules. It's not like, did you make a million dollars? Did you find the love of your life? Do you have six pack abs? Those are not the rules to go there. It's, am I neutral? Do I, am I okay with who I am? Have I embodied my darkness and my light? Great, get over there. Because the body you want, the body, the money you want is all there. Okay, just about vibration. Okay, I have a little too much. So does anybody have any questions that they want to add? I've got questions in the queues, but I think, or if it's all just scripting, New Hampshire, uh, Ireland, woohoo. Okay, bless you for staying up. Anybody have any questions or anything they want to add before we wrap? Because I'm going to give you guys a discount code if you have not jumped on with our quantum fitness, okay? It's, um, I'm adding content. I will be adding content as we go, just because it's, it's you know, I'm learning and, and developing this. So although one is done, part two is done, we're working on three, oh, we're adding more. It's also in Spanish, hello. How freaking cool is that? Okay, that's amazing. And it's not being taught by me. It's being taught by Lee, who is one of my practitioners who's been with me for years. She called me up. She's like, I wanna do this in Spanish. I'm like, good, go. She says, well, I got to teach you a little different because of the different demographic. Go, do it. Let's, let's get the world well, okay? Stop healing, start living. Remember, am I doing to be or I being to have? This is all you have to ask yourself to see where you are. And if you're like, I don't know, just jump on. So the um, discount code for you guys, if you haven't done part one, it's just, Jules sent it to me. Where was it? Um, I think it's just QFIT01. And that is for quantum fitness part one. And if you are if you're, haven't done part two, uh, the discount to get 25% off is just QFIT02. And part three is QFIT part three. Now, if you have not done one and two, I will not let you in three. Unless you've done a mentorship with me. Because there's just certain elements in part one and two that need, your grief needs to be I mean, you got to have light in your body in order to start alchemizing and turning into a superhero. Otherwise, you're going to make a super villain. And we got enough of those on this planet. Do you know what a super villain is? Is someone who accessed all of their DNA and did not process their grief. Study the backstories of the villains in your books. Go look at the backstory of every single villain. Someone hurt them. Someone abandoned them. Someone killed their family. 
and they used all of their galactic energy to get revenge because hurt people hurt people. We don't want that over there. We have been hurt enough. So you're not, first of all, gonna be able to take your baggage over there. And secondly, we don't need more of those, those guys out there because an, a, a super villain can reach the ninth dimension. Yeah, that's how powerful they are. But guess what you can do? 12, easily, literally, by literally getting in touch with your pineal gland energy and accessing your digital heart. You guys are gonna realize your heart is a touch screen. I'm not kidding. What I have seen working with Gabriel the last two weeks is like blowing my mind. Like, oh my gosh, it's so quantum. Like, you don't even know this hologram you're sitting in. Because we think we're this dusty old, you know, ancient model. And it's literally just waiting for you to show up. All right. So also, because so much impacted grief creates storms, I also wasn't planning to do it, but I'm going to do one final light language activation towards the end of the year. It's on the website, the dates, and it's just, it's not an activation per se, it's a release. And I'm going to be working in the grief release processes of all of your elementals and all of your fractals. We're going to be working in all of your timelines to just, just kind of neutralize grief down to the sediment points. So if there is any Luciferian energy in your collective, we're going to pull it in and love it, okay? Because that's all it needs. And we're going to do it with a light expansion team. So we'll have probably four or five expanded um, collectives of the archangels come in and they're going to deliver this light activation that's going to just purify your grief. Now, when grief is purified, it does not dissipate. It needs to be turned into something which means that we're gonna be alchemizing it. We're not just gonna be like, and you're healed. You know, it's gonna be like, let's neutralize it, turn it malleable. Now you need to decide what you're gonna do with it. What are you gonna turn it into? What are you gonna become because of it? How is it empowering you? It's like, if you think about how a super villain is, is created, how is a super man created? Same issue. He lost his parents too, didn't he? But he chose love. I don't want anybody to feel what I'm feeling and he chose love. This is where we're split right now. And we're going to go. And right now it's masculine and feminine. We're going to go over there and we're going to use love as our teacher. Okay. So when you think about the driving force of your superhuman abilities, guaranteed, guaranteed, you just want people to experience the love that you have and you want to be able to receive the vitality of what's in your own soul. That's it. That's all you came for. And you're going to use time because sometimes those hugs just need to last a little longer. And that wine goes down real smooth with time. Time is not supposed to be your enemy. And right now you're like, shit, it's running out. I found a gray hair. You know that with gamma frequency, which your brain has access to, you stop aging. How old do you feel? Isn't it funny you feel younger, but your body's older? So Let's right now set an intention. How old do I choose to be in the new world? How old? Hmm, I choose 30. I like 30 because I'm old enough to be sassy and get away with it, right? I'm not, but I'm, I'm young enough to, you know, to be cool, right? I feel 30. How old do you feel? Let's use that as our intention to not turn the clock back, but to alchemize. The energy. We are the epigenetic. So we focus what we choose. Okay. That means stop looking in the mirror till you purify your grief. Do it. Right. Focus on what you choose to see versus what you see. There's lots more coming. Okay. Lots of exciting things. January is just right around the corner. December 21st. Bye bye 3D. The new game's here. You can all afford the new console. You all have the upgraded model. Every ounce of you is just popping, but it will not feel like excitement. It will feel like neutral. Like that. logical next step, path of least resistance. Okay. If you're not neutral about people, places, and things in your life, get in your quantum fitness. Let's purge it out and let's make something with it. And let's get this body online because guys, you need to get turned on and girls, you need to be seen and heard. Okay, and who's going to turn you on? 
the feminine. And who's going to see and hear us? The masculine. Because it's such an exciting game when you realize that the true love of your life is not male or female, but it is the masculine and feminine energy that is healed. And when I say healed, balanced. Non-duality. That's all you have to do. How much of my life is in non-duality? Crap, none of it. I got to go back over there. Anybody have any last question before I wrap? Thank you once again. Awesome, Jamie. Glad, glad to have you. Um, anybody have anything they want to add? Anything? Any questions? Bye, Jamie. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'm always available for questions. Yes, please. Uh, hi, Jess. Um, I'm just wondering how, how much is the price if I've only done number two? I haven't done number one and I'm interested in number three. So mm -hmm. what, what was that? I um, missed. I that. don't, Julie's on there. She might be asleep though. Yeah. Um, I, I don't actually know any of my prices because I'm not, uh, but I do know that we're offering 25% off. So whatever it is on the website, yeah. if you go to part three, the price will be there. I think okay. it was like two ninety nine before. I don't, I don't know the price. Um, you have to go look. Julie's written two ninety nine, So yeah. Mm -hmm. plus 20% yeah. off or is that, oh, okay yeah 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 and if you haven't done one i would i would recommend at some point when you when you feel like you can i mean i'll let you in because you did too but yeah. i really really want that number one is where we really kind of unpack some of those ghosts yep. so if you feel like you're not going as fast as you want jump into part one okay, okay. also if you guys feel like you're just overloaded with grief jump into the $99 activation. I mean, you're literally going to have like a collective of galactic angels just purging your grief for 99 bucks. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, you, you cannot get a better deal in the universe. Like, <laughs> and that's going to be just fun for me because grief is, grief is the destruction of earth because grief turns you into rage. It turns men into enslaving women and it turns women into big dick energy and it's not fun right? To have to be a man when I came here to be a woman, right? I want to have it all, but I also want sometimes to be submissive. And I want to know that I'm taken care of, but that does not mean I'm weak, okay? Because we came to co-create. We're always on an island suffering, and it's time for us to just be a family, right? No color, no time, no age, just love, Right. So yeah, great question. The rest of you guys, if you do have any questions from tonight, you know, throw them in, um, throw them on the website. You can ask questions on the website. I can definitely do like a live Q&A. If you didn't have a chance to see Second Sunday, it's there, kind of break down the game. And then I wrote a blog for you. So hopefully there is enough information for you to at least see where you are on your own vision quest. Because you are on a vision quest that's a treasure map. And every dark night of the soul is a quantum leap if you see it that way. Those are your biggest leaps because those are your deepest roots, all right? Okay, guys, thank you for letting me be here and thank you for showing up. And I look forward to what's coming because it literally is, I have seen everything. I've seen the new money systems. I've seen the new time ordinance. I've seen the new body platforms. I mean, I, I'm like a kid, a kid waiting for Christmas. It's like, it's so freaking excited. And guess what? It gets to be in our lifetime. Do you realize that we didn't really like, we didn't even think we were going to see the evidence of what we've been doing. And some of you are like, well, I haven't been doing much. Please don't devalue yourself by existing. You are the seed of the second coming because of the way you love, not because of what you've done. Not because of what you haven't done. If, if you don't feel like you've contributed anything, you have contributed more because you have been in the dirt, silently loving, radiating your essence out to the planet who didn't see you and didn't value you, and you have done your job. And so at some point, our job is to bloom because what that does is it creates pollen and fruit. Guess what pollen does? builds a whole new world. So guys, you're the pollen. Girls, we're the fruit. Okay. And we get to build the new planet through our essence, not our seeds. So totally exciting times coming. 
obviously, if I'm working with Gabriel, it's all about the second coming energy. Guess what? Look in the mirror and say to yourself, I'm the second coming of Christ. How does that feel? Right? If that doesn't light you up, right, you need to do some grief work and remember who the hell you are because you have survived this long and kept a loving heart. That's the Christed energy. And it got nothing to do with Christianity. It's the Christed crystalline energy that is sitting in your heart that, that no matter what people have done to you, it has not made you mean. That's Christ. Look in the mirror tonight and say, I am the second coming. What do I want to show the world? How do I want to walk in the image? How do I want to show up? How do I want to play? Right? You better own it because it's never going to change. And there's not one person that I see that it does not fall into that category, even if you don't feel like it. Guaranteed, Jesus did not feel like the Messiah. He did not feel special, right? He was just trying to be kind when he was being attacked. And we know his name, right? So obviously that pollen went pretty far because it's in all of you. It's in us. So let's go play. No more healing. Throw the spiritual books away. Stop. You are the deity. You are God. You are Jesus. You are everything. How do you want to demonstrate that? Demonstrate will heal you. Demonstrate play. Demonstrate laughter. Demonstrate being a different character every day. This is going to speed up your healing. If you say you're sick, your body's like, dang it, we have to be sick. It listens to you. Did you know that you are the Messiah to your body? Okay, I'm going to shut up now. I got too many people talking through me. All right. Have a great night, you guys. Please join us in Quantum Fitness just because you deserve it. And it's super cheap. And we're having so much fun. I mean, they're not right now because they're in the middle of grief, but don't talk to them right now. They're going to get through grief and they're going to get to heaven. I promise you, the ones who are doing the worst are the closest. Okay. Because again, you know, detox is sometimes painful. All right. So I will see you guys in our classroom and thank you for joining me and thank you guys for choosing yourselves. Bye. Oh, by the way, that frequency chart is in your chat so we can post it somewhere for you. Bye guys.